Well, greetings to each and every one of you on this July 4th, 2023. It's all by grace and by mercy of the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. May, his, may he bless and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And I want to thank each and every one of you for coming on this Zoom because I believe and I know in your heart, you know how important the last days and the end times are that you want to walk and work and move with the Trinity. Walking, working, moving with the Trinity. I want to say it again. Walking, working, and moving with the Trinity. Tonight, Jesus said we should continue to make soul decrees, heart decrees, and mind decrees. Are you ready? Since Saturday, since he made the decree that we should use the glory, which is his face, his heart, which is his love, and his hands, which is his power, we should make decrees from those places, face-to-face -face decrees, heart-to-heart -heart decrees, hand-to-hand -hand decrees. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established. In order for your love to be established for Jesus, you have to decree it in your heart. So tonight, wherever you are, we're going to make soul decrees and heart decrees. Tonight, as part of the continual process of purification and cleansing whenever we come on. Because he's doing a new thing on the earth. And we need new hearts, pure heart and clean hands to walk with him. Pure heart and clean hands to move with him. Pure heart and clean hands to move, walk, and work. And this is the generation that is called to not only his face, because in the beginning was face to face. And in the end will be face like my face. But also, this is the generation that's called to do greater works. And the Father's eyes is constantly, day and night, going through and fro the earth, looking for a friend, looking for a bride, and looking for a son who is willing. You see, friends walk. Brides move. Sons work. When Jesus said you will do greater works, he was talking about sonship. See, friends are for the kingdom. Sons are for the power. But brides are for the glory. Because the glory of a man is a woman. So the glory of Jesus is his bride. But the glory of the father is his sons. And so we're talking about glory manifestations. The highest glory manifestation is, uh, is the Father in Jesus appearing to you. It's the highest. It's you meeting the person. But the person has manifestations that follow them. Colossians. He said tonight, decree and declare these two scriptures. Colossians 1. Verse 9 is a, is a very, very powerful prayer. And then Ephesians 3. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire, watch this, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Write that down. You have to be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Some of you want to know his will. Have to be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and what? 
spiritual understanding to that ye might walk worthy of the Lord in all pleasing. So watch this. You can please him in one area, but you're not pleasing him in all areas. All pleasing. Tonight, not only we're going to talk about what he said about America, we're going to get to that one. But tonight, we're going to continue to talk about the intimacy, relationship, fellowship, and communion. But what's key is these three. His heart, his face, and his hand. And I'm going to tell you why. Because in his face is glory. That's the only way you can change. The reason why many are not changing, they're not in his face. Because the glory is in his face. And so he said, we are changed into the same image from what? Glory to glory. Only glory can change you. Not love. Not blood. Not power. You see, there are different parts of Jesus that do different things for you. His face will change your face. How many of you know what's in the heart is revealed on the face? You know what's in your heart is revealed on your face? You can tell someone's heart by looking on their face. If you are face to face with Jesus, you can tell someone's heart on their face without them talking. Because you have a heart to face relationship with him. See, to reveal the secrets of the hearts of men. But take note of this. Why we always talk about his face. And why in the end times and last days, if you're not in his face, how you will miss all. See right here, he says, all wisdom is in his face. Some wisdom, see? Some people have wisdom, but they don't have all wisdom. If you want all wisdom, as I continue to read, you will see. How many of you want all wisdom, all knowledge, see? All understanding, all love. You have to be in his face for him to trust you with all things see i can do all things through christ see all things why are we not doing all things in the body of christ mm -hmm. because we haven't given him all our heart all our mind see all our body you see these five areas if you don't have all in one area you can get all from him how many want to walk in all glory well, you got to give him all your face, eyes, nose. See, I love what my friend talked about last time about how he, he said, I know my bridegroom by face, by smell, by touch, by sight, by ears. How intimate are you with Jesus and the Father where you know his smell, his presence. It's very important. That intimacy, the relationship, the fellowship and communion, that's where the soul and the heart decrees come from. See, that ye might walk worthy of, of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. And increasing in the knowledge of God. Watch this. Strengthening with all might. According to his glorious power. See, again it says all might. I'm going to say one more thing. If you want to walk in glory, powers. See, not only is the glory in his face. There is also power in his face. That's why it's called glorious power. There is Loving power, and there is glorious power. All might. See, unto all patience. Do you have all patience? Long suffering with joyfulness. Giving thanks unto the Father who has made us meet to the partakers of the inheritance in the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom, take note, in whom we have redemption through the blood. Uh-oh. How can God redeem your soul and your heart? Remember what we said in the beginning. Glory, love, blood. You need to know how each one of these are important for your heart 
and your soul? Which one goes to your heart? Which one goes to your soul? Which one goes to your body? You need the blood for redemption of what? Your mind, your soul, your heart. How many of you want redemption? You need the blood. In whom we have redemption through the glory? No. Through the love? No. Through the blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. You see, forgiveness go with redemption. So if you don't forgive someone, watch this. You don't have access to the blood. And you can't be redeemed. You can be restored, but not redeemed. Let me say it again. We have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. I love 15 to 18, sorry, to 19. No, no, as a matter of fact, to 20, because that's what he wants to talk about today. And then when we are done, we're going to make gate decrees today. Eye gate, ear gate, mouth gate, tongue gate. All the gates you need, blood, glory fire in those areas who is the image of the invisible god the firstborn of all creature he's talking about jesus for by him take note of that face by me face by my face see by him where all things created mm. All things created was by who? Him. That are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Take note of those realms. Whether there be thrones, take note, dominions. See, one day I'll talk about this one. War and battle. Thrones, dominions, principalities, powers. Fathers, gods, sons, emperors. He's all in all. Jesus is all in all. He has thrones, he has dominions, he has principalities, and he has powers. I'm not talking about the demonic. They are thieves. Jesus has thrones. Dominions is with an S. So if he has thrones, what does that make him? An emperor. If he has dominion, what does that make him? A god. If he has principalities, what does that make him? A king. If he has powers, what does that make him? Prince. Prince have powers. Kings have kingdoms. Emperors have empires. Gods, no, sorry. Gods have worlds and they give it to sons. Fathers have, fathers have universe. This is who Jesus is. Thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers. All things was created by him. Take note of that. For him. Face for my face. Every time you see by him, in him, put his face there. Face by my, your face have to be by his face. Your face must be in his face. Come on. See? For him. Is your face for his face or against his face? See? All things were created by him. So that means you can't walk in creation glory if you're not by him. Not by a preacher. By Jesus. You have to go through him. And he is before all things. And by him, all things coexist. Take note. And he is the head of the body. That's the face. What's the head? It's the face. The church. Who is the beginning? The firstborn from the dead. That in all things, he might have the preeminence. I love verse 19. My God. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Jesus has the fullness of the Father. And the God. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, 
by him to reconcile unto him all things unto himself. You see, they got reconciliation. See, so one was redemption, one was reconciliation. So you see what the blood is doing? The blood don't only re redeem you, it reconciles you to the Father. You see why when we start making blood decrees, what starts happening? Redemption of all things, restoration of all things, recovery of all things, restoration to the Father. You cannot be, re rest you, sorry, you cannot be reconciled to the Father without peace through the blood. Ah, so if there's peace in the blood, what else is in the blood? So please, we're not coming on here to just make, oh, I decree the blood should go back in time and space to every place where, see? No, you, have to, you need to understand what the blood is doing. It is speaking better things. The blood speaks. The blood also gives you peace. Right here. Everybody see it? Have been made peace. Through the blood. Do you know if you don't have the blood, you are not at peace with God. And he's not at peace with you. In order to be a prince of peace, you need blood. My friends, these four things Jesus said we should decree every day. Don't take it lightly. Your destiny, purpose, identity, and intimacy depends on his face, heart, and hand, and what's coming from his face. Glory, what's coming from his heart, love, what's coming from his hand, power, but what's also coming from his side, blood. You need all four when going through purification, cleansing, redemption. See? Oh. So, for example, we decree the blood is going back in time and space to every place where my peace was stolen. You need the blood to get back your peace. Do you know, watch, do you see those four? Glory, power. So glory, love, power, and blood. Do you know what each one does for your heart, mind, soul, body? Which one goes where? The heart needs love. Because the Father is over the heart. Jesus is over your soul. The soul needs power. I've given you power over all the power of the enemy. Serpents and scorpions are after our soul. But your body needs glory. That's why he says, your body needs heart, the heart. But Jesus have a new body. A glorified body. Come on. Glorified heart. Come on. So please write down those four. This is what you use to make the soul decrees and heart decrees. I decree the glory in my heart. See, I decree the, his love in my heart. You can put all four in your heart. His love, his power, his glory, his blood. And watch this. Those four begin to work in your heart, the issues in your life. This is the hour and time to not only apply the blood. No, we are decreeing. Decree is an emperor. From his face, I decree that the blood is going back in time and space. See, the blood is going back in time and space to every place where, watch this. What's the opposite of peace? War came in my heart. So if there's any war going on in your soul and your heart right now, what do you need to decree? Blood and peace. Right there. It says, through he has made, let's read it again. Having made peace through the blood of his cross. Come on, somebody. Without the blood, there is no peace. And definitely there is no rest or joy or love. That means if there is peace in the blood, what else is in the blood? Love is in the blood. Life is in the blood. So if you need resurrection in your life, you need the blood. There are, there are mysteries and revelations and secrets about Jesus' blood because it was made by the Father. His body and his blood was specially made by the Father. He didn't have an ordinary body or an ordinary blood because he was born of the Holy Spirit. That means he had a different body, different blood. 
different sweat, different tears that touches souls and hearts. So as we, before we enter into those soul decrees tonight and those heart decrees, the foundation is key. If there are areas in your soul, heart and body that you are struggling with, you need to apply one of these four. Let's mention them again. Glory is from his face. Love is from his heart. When Jesus visits you, he gives you one of these four or he gives you all four. I'm going to say it again. Whenever Jesus visits you face to face, he's coming to either translate or impart glory, love, his blood or his power. There's so much more, but I'm giving you the foundation because in his presence is life. He's giving you life. Where, watch this, it says, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. Jesus is coming to add when he comes to you. Whenever Jesus comes to you, he's coming to add and multiply. He don't subtract or divide. He adds, he multiplies. So that's why when you have a visitation, it's not just a visitation. You need to, know that. You need to understand the fullness of what he gave you. Or you will miss what he's doing. You will miss what he's saying and doing. Can I talk to all 22 of you? It's time to increase your hunger and thirst to meet him. It's time to return to the original intimacy he wanted with us from the beginning. You know, that means your spiritual eyes and your ears opening. Please, hearing his voice is, is good, but it's not enough. No, I want to challenge each and every one of you on the line that your hunger and your thirst must increase in this end time because I tell you the truth. The times we are about to enter in, if you don't meet him as a person, you won't be able to defend him. You will deny him like Peter. Because the deception and the seduction and the temptations to fold will increase because of fear. Fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, fear of death. Are you ready to not only sit next to Jesus, but stand with him? Then, my friends, don't settle for just his presence and his voice in your life. That is good. But can I go deep? Do you know his presence and his voice is lesser intimacy? It's the lesser. It's not the higher. And he's calling us higher. Heights is his face. He wants you to meet him and see him. This is his highest desire. Glory is not hearing it. It's seeing. I think Perpetua is on the line. Perpetua, if you're on the line, can you unmute your line? And can you tell the people the dream you had? If Perpetua is there. So everybody will understand why am I not seeing him? Perpetua had a dream. Is Perpetua there? I'm online, sir. Can you please tell everyone on the line? Hello? Yes, can you hear me? Hello, sir. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can do so. Can you tell us the dream you had? What was removed from your face? So the people will understand. Why am I not seeing Jesus face yeah. to face? Uh -huh. Please tell them so that they will, they will, they will understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, God bless you all. So I had a dream. Um, that was the day the, um, the man of God was talking about the glory of God face to face and how God wants us to um, come to his glory. So I just drifted off in the dream within a few minutes, and then I saw myself removing a web of cobwebs from my face, like a very big, the cobweb was round, like it covered my face, like very big, that's as if all my face was just, it was just like the um, size of my face, exactly, mm -hmm. I removed the first one, which is the big, then there was smaller one, smaller one again, and then I removed it again, then I woke up. 
Did everybody hear that? Yes, sir. Do you know what cobwebs are? Spider webs, cobwebs. What is on your face? She got face-to-face -face deliverance. Just because you see Jesus in a dream, that don't mean that don't mean the cobwebs have left. He hasn't lifted up the veil yet. The veils and the scales have to be removed. That's why it says, beholding him with an open face. Your, your heart and face has to be open for him to change you. It means you can see him and not change. Did you know that? You can see Jesus and not change. They saw Jesus 2,000 years ago on earth. Nobody changed except the ones who received the Holy Spirit. They were healed. They were delivered, but they were not changed. That's the key. People think, don't think because you see deliverance, healing and miracles and the power of God that people are changing. No, they are being delivered and healed to be changed and become like him. It's not power. You have to open your heart for the glory to invade and infiltrate your character and turn. See, this is what the glory does. It turns you from pride to humility. It, the glory, right, when it comes, it's coming to change your heart and the way you love, the way you treat people. The, the glory carries correction, rebukes, chastisement. The glory, when it comes, it's not just coming for show. Oh, I saw the glory. No, 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 no. That's manifestations of the glory. That don't mean you've changed. In order for you to change into the same image that you just saw from glory to glory, he will begin to talk to you about the Beatitudes. Blessed are the humble. Humility is glory. Meekness is glory. Love is glory. Patience is glory. So if you're not changing or bearing fruit, the glory, you're seeing it, but it's not changing you because you have cobwebs. It's either you have veils or scales. Scales is religion. Veils, sorry. Scales is pride. Veils is religion. She removed from her face cobwebs. That's religion and pride from her face. That's what happened to Paul when he saw the light. It says the scales came off his eyes and he saw Jesus. Wow. What is in your eyes? I need to be removed. She got face-to-face -face deliverance. And what's the, the eye is the window to the soul. That means the cobwebs that was in her soul, her ears, her nose, because it was on her face. And the face, what's on your face is what's in your body. Do you know when you are sick? Look in the mirror. I always do it. Jesus tells me, always look in the mirror and look at your eyes. That means something's going on in your soul. You need to eat more fruits. What's going on in your body is revealed in your eyes. That's why when you go to the doctor, the first thing he do is he put light in your eyes to see. Okay, I know where you're sick. Ah. So if the eye is the window to the soul, hmm, what is in your eyes? Logs and specks that's keeping your soul from loving him. David said, bless the Lord, O my soul. You might love him with your mind, but you don't love him with your heart. You know why? Please write it down. Two things is hindering you. Veils and scales. Religion and pride. Religion works on the old you. We know what pride does. This is why preparation is important for visitation. Preparation for visitation is key. Mm -hmm. Take note of that. So tonight, we want to make soul decrees from his blood. Do you know the blood give you a Passover? That means if, if you are failing in your soul, when you say the blood of Jesus, 
it says the blood of Jesus speak better things than the blood of Abel. So if we don't decree the blood, his blood is not speaking for you in court. The blood is not speaking to the sin, iniquity, transgressions, and the demons that are behind certain character behaviors and traits. Some of us want the blood to speak for us. Speak to it. So please, let's lay down the foundation again. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, strength. See these five areas? Watch this. Whichever one is the weakest, that's what the enemy is after. That's where he does attachments, soul ties, and entanglements. See what she saw in her dream? All three came out of her. Soul ties, entanglements, and attachments. They were on her face. That's cobwebs. What did Paul say? He says that you're no more entangled with the world. That's web, spider web. Cobwebs, that's spiders, that's traps. You know, spiders, they do webs to trap their prey. Mm -hmm. That means she will no more be trapped in religion, trapped in tradition, trapped in culture, trapped in pride. It has been removed from her face. What's next? Now she need that glory on her face to maintain her healing, maintain her deliverance. So as long as she stays in his face, through worship, praise, and thanksgiving, she will no more have no veils or scales. Now she begin to see him clearly, hear him plainly. See? I'm telling you, there is a face-to-face -face healing and deliverance you need before you can walk with him. Seeing him as he is. This is a glorious generation, not talking. We have enough preachers who are talking Nobody's changing. Because we need glory carriers that will change. Remember, that's why I love William Adal, his song. The song says, the change I want to see must first begin in me. So you can't change nations or change the world if he don't change you first. And then when he changed you, you can change anything. That's the process. He's changing you Watch this, to solve a problem. I'm going to let you know, you were created for his glory. Glory comes to solve or change, solve a problem. Each and every one of you on the line, there is a problem on earth right now. You are called to solve. You are called to change. That's assignment, not ministry. Let's say you are assigned to abortion. Abortion is a problem. Maybe you are assigned to human sex trafficking. What is your assignment? You can't fulfill your assignment if you don't have glory. You can't change it. So let me say it again. Glory, love, blood, and fire. You need all four. What does the fire do? It says it comes to burn the chaff and the, the chaff and the wheat. Ah. Chaff. What is chaff? Can I go deep? Do you know snakes hide in chaff? That's why Moses saw God in the burning bush because Egypt was full of snakes. You need fire. Don't miss this in your soul so that if there's any snakes hiding anywhere in your garden, they come out. Mm. Write that down. I need Baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. Why? The fire is twofold. The fire comes to burn anything in you that's not like him. It consumes it too. The fire to stay in love with him. So the fire does a work and a walk. So do you know how Jesus cast out demons? He was baptizing them with Holy Spirit and fire. That's why snakes, that's why it says snakes and scorpions. Snakes don't like fire. So imagine you start decreeing, Lord, I decree your fire in my soul. Let me tell you the truth. If there's any snakes in your mind, will and emotions, they come out because they don't like fire. So let's talk about it. The snake 
and the fire. Or sorry, the serpent and the soul. Mm, that should be a teaching right there. The serpent and the soul. Mind, will, emotions. What do you need for your soul? You need fire. What do you need for your heart? You need not only the blood, but you need love. Because love is the greatest. What do you need for your body? You need also, but let me tell you, you need all four. But you can break them down into each places. How many of you want intimacy with him? Relationship with him? Fellowship with him and communion? There is a preparation. In order for Jesus to walk with the Father, he had to be dipped in water. Baptism of water. Then the Holy Spirit came. Do you need to be baptized in glory? See, Jesus was baptized in water. What do you need baptism in? Do you need baptism, baptism of glory? Baptism of love? Baptism of fire? Or baptism of blood? Write that down. Wherever you are, write down those four. You need one of these to be, you need one of these four baptisms. Where? Your heart, your mind, your soul, your body. Let me tell you why. Any area that's lacking, that's an open door for the enemy to attack. Let's say you love God with your heart and your mind. You love, you love God with your heart and your soul, but not with your body. He can, Satan can attack your body with sickness like Job. So love covers you from attacks of the enemy. Write it down. This will help you. If there's any area the enemy is attacking you right now, you lack love in that area. Mm. So we are done for tonight. We're going to share the grace tonight and we're going to end. Because that right there, it's a generational revelation. Any area the enemy is attacking you, it's a sign you lack love. Love is not. You don't have a covering. It's like boxing. Once, the, once your opponent sees your weakness, they will keep hitting that area until you protect it. Why does the enemy keep attacking your mind? Oh, I found mine out this month. It's my body. So Jesus will tell me, love me with your body. I said, Lord, how do I love you? How, how, do, you, how do I love you with my body? Everyone on the line, you need inspection. You need to ask Jesus, what area am I not loving you? And be ready for corrections and adjustments. Because inspections are important. At least you think you're in right standing, but you're not. Let me give you a secret. Every, every six months, Jesus inspects you. He came to inspect the seven churches of Revelations. Only two. Past five failed. He didn't even give them no promise. That woman called Jezebel, boom, I'm gonna kill her children. Tyatra. Only Philadelphia and Sardis hardly passed the test. There were a few who walked with him in white, so they passed. But the other five, when Jesus inspected them, here was a revelation which one are you in the seven? Write that down. Jesus, inspect me. And don't be scared. Because if you're not inspected, you're not approved. It's just like a commander-in-chief, the president, inspecting the army. If he doesn't inspect the army and they go to war and they fail, it's on the president. He's commander-in-chief. Jesus does the same thing. He's the chief shepherd. He's the commander of the host of heaven. He comes to inspect your heart. And if you are, that's what he says. That's what he said. Oh, I've seen your good works and da, da 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 da. But one thing I have against you, you need inspections like that. What does Jesus have against you? Ooh, here go the heart saying, What? Okay, I'm going to show you. Revelations. Some people don't think, some people don't think Jesus will have something against them. He will. Revelations 1. You ready? Well, Revelations 2, verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. What does Jesus have against you in this season? 
We say, huh? Jesus can have something against me? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why you need inspection. The first church, when he inspected the first church, they left their first love. You need this kind of inspections to know if you've left something. He told me, this latest inspection, you love me in every area except your body. I don't know. How do you love Jesus with your body? You know, he told me, dancing. I didn't know dancing was loving you. I do a lot of singing, but I don't dance. He said, dancing is loving me with your body. He said, David did it. And he was naked. I said, David loved you with his body like that? Where? My friends, we in July 4th. You need independence from the devil. <laughs> oh, somebody. You need in which area of your five needs independence, meaning freedom. And let me give you a secret. You can love him with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. I'm letting you know right now, because you are human, one of those five will be your weakest. It's very hard to be strong in all areas, in every area. Even Jesus had a weakness in his body. He said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus' flesh is his weakness. So if you're on the line, you too will have a weakness. Just make sure it's not in your heart. At least it can be in your body. Because the body will go back to dirt. But you're supposed to, because remember, your, your body is the temple of Holy Spirit. So I just gave you a clue. How many of you want to love God with your body? Dancing. He said, this is the area. I want you to do more. So now I'll put on music and I just begin to dance. That's, he said, dance like David dance. So I take off my clothes, go in the shower. I begin to dance with my body. Same thing with you. If he comes to inspect you like this, he will say, I have something against you. Oh, what's he going to say? He's not going to reject you. He's not correcting you to cast you off. No, he's helping you walk with him upright. You've left your first love, the first church. Ooh. I got that inspection before years ago. Let me give you a secret. When you become Jesus' friend, bride and son, he treats you different. Your inspections are different, especially when you were a son. If you were a son, your rebukes and chastisements and corrections are more than ordinary children and babes. And you can say, Lord, why are you so, why are you being so hard with me? Because you are my son. You are heir to my throne. If I'm not on the throne, you will be on my throne. Therefore, I don't put immature bastards on my throne. I said, whoa. See? He said, immature bastards. You know what that means? People who can't take correction. It says, endure hardness as a good soldier. Read Hebrews. It says, a son who endures chastening. See that? You have to endure chastisement. Father chastises. Jesus corrects. Holy Spirit rebukes. He says, as many as I love, I discipline. Um... You can't be a disciple if you don't go through discipline. Because discipline is the key to greatness. No. I've been through Jesus' discipline. When I had 40 types of pride, he was disciplining me in humility. And it didn't feel good. How many of you are ready to mature in your walk with him? You're going to have such experiences. He is going to use, now it's twofold. He will either use tests, trials, temptations, and tribulations to correct you. Or he will come to you face-to-face -face in a dream or vision or talk to you and tell you, this is where you are lacking. This is where you are falling short of my glory. And then he give you the solution. I remember my first visitation was that one. I was so caught up in ministry, I left my first love. He said, I see the price you are paying for my father and I. See, he first encouraged you. Jesus will always encourage you, 
celebrate you. But then when he's ending, he tell you what he has against you in that season. This season, you've passed humility, but you didn't pass meekness. He will always test those two. I hope somebody's now, well, it's going to be on YouTube. After tonight, it's going to be on YouTube. So just look, listen, and learn. When Jesus is inspecting you, he's talking about these two areas. Your love walk, your humility walk, and your meekness walk. In 15 years walking with him so far, the area where he inspects you the most is meekness. Your love towards people. Write this one down. Humility is to love God. Meekness is to love people. If you don't love people, he will correct you in meekness. He will chastise you in meekness. And it don't feel good. You know how he's going to do it? He will allow your enemies to come against you just so you learn forgiveness. He will allow people to speak evil of you just so you pray for them. That's meekness. Meekness is to choose mercy and not retaliation. And it hurts when people call you names. You can't talk back. He will tell you that's not meekness. <laughs> you trying to defend yourself, he will tell you that's not meekness. And you want to pass a test, so you need correction. Correction is not harsh. It's shaping your character to become like him, to resemble him. I was meek, but I wasn't quiet. Meek means I forgive you, but in my heart, it's still talking. My heart was still talking while my lips was not moving. Everybody, don't miss this revelation I'm about to tell you. Your mouth can be shut because of what people say, but your heart wants to respond. You, you, need, what, you, you, you know what you need next? Self-control immediately. Let me give you a secret. Because when people call you names and insult you and reject you, watch this. Five things come. Pride, defensiveness. You want to be defensive. That's pride. So you need self-control. Your heart wants to talk, but you got to keep your mouth shut because there's life and death in your tongue. And if you release it in responding, you can hurt someone. Well, they hurt me. You're working for the devil now. Because that's what he does. He hurts. He don't wound. You see why you need love in your soul? Because the enemy comes after your soul. Mind, will, emotions. What do you need? You need love in your soul. To not respond. Which areas? He's going to inspect you. My first inspection was meekness. He said, you've passed love. You've passed humility. You are meek, but you're not quiet. I hear your thoughts. of Why, why are they talking about me? See, that was that silent pride. Oh. Maybe one day I'll teach on that one. Y'all ready for the different types of pride? Woo. Hold on, let me see if I still have it in my archives. He called one silent pride. That one? Hmm. Hold on. Wait a minute. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find that one. Yeah. Oh, here you go. I found it. You, you want to hear about silent pride before we get back? Hear this. One second. Silent pride is when you climb the pulpit to preach and you want to prove to someone how powerful you can preach. Mm -hmm. Are you on the line trying to prove yourself to people? That's silent pride. That's not loud pride. That's not, well, you know, pride is a root. You know, pride is a tree, right? And it has many fruits and branches. See? So watch this. How many of you want pride out of your heart? Your heart needs to be circumcised. And when he's circumcising your heart, he tells you things like this. You have, you have meekness, but si I said silent pride. Lord, what is that? He said, you're not defensive, but on the inside, you want to prove a point. Got me. It's true. Because you want to be right, don't you? He said, no. I said, deny yourself. That's self-righteousness, not my righteousness. You know, self-righteousness, watch this. You can have God's righteousness, but because you haven't denied yourself, it becomes self-righteousness, which is still pride. 
So when you deny yourself, when people call you names, you have to deny yourself, meaning self has to die. And I had meekness, meaning Father, forgive them, do not what they do. But on the inside, I was hearing that voice. Pray against your enemies. Cut them off. Block them. Who they think they are. That's that silent pride talking loud. I say, wow, I have silent pride. You say, you have 40 of them. Let's go over all the silent pride. This is part of purification, sanctification, cleansing. Because if you're going to carry glory, he got to get it all out of you. One, silent pride. You ready? He said, silent pride is when you can't commend others in ministry because you feel like you are bringing yourself down to be doing that. If you cannot honor others above you, greater than you, you have silent pride. My friends, when Jesus was teaching this right, it was piercing my soul and my heart. And guess what it does when he gives you the way? When it pierces your heart and soul, it turns to tears. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Change me. Then he said, then he will say, You are clean by the words I'm talking, I'm telling you. So whenever he said you have silent pride, he clean it. He's not condemning you watch this he's using truth to uproot the pride while he's cleaning you with mercy at the same time so he's showing you mercy by telling you truth but you have to say yes lord i have silent pride you can't say well i don't have pride he can't change you if you defend yourself acknowledge that you do because he is the truth he called the woman a dog imagine she's saying oh i'm not a dog that her daughter wouldn't have been healed. He called the Pharisees snakes. They didn't say, yes, we are snakes. Change us. They got defensive. Truth sometimes comes to expose who you really are. And you have to admit and acknowledge, this is who I am, Lord. Look, Jesus called me a pig one day. He called me a dog. Those early days, the, chast the chastisements, you know what he was doing? He said, I'm getting religion out of you that religious spirit out of you. Dogs don't give holy things to dogs. I was giving holy things to dogs. He called me a dog. I was giving pearls to pigs. He called me a pig. Pigs and dogs in dreams represents a religious spirit in you or around you. Some of us want the glory. This is it. If you want glory, you want to be a carrier of the glory. If you want to manifest his glory. He has to confront your heart. And whatever is in the heart that will make you fall short of the glory. He confronts it, exposes it to you, and he gives you a solution. But you have to be humble to say, I acknowledge I do have pride. Don't think because of the gifts and anointing that he's using you. No, when you start reaching friendship and sonship and bride, he confronts you with love. You want to hear another one? <laughs> Silent pride is when others honor you and you feel like you are better than them. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. You feel like you are better than them. That's silent pride. Next one. Silent pride is when you are rebuked and deep down your heart, you feel bad and offended and can't express it. Ooh. Did y'all hear that one? <laughs> Silent pride is when you are corrected or rebuked and deep down in your heart, you feel bad and offended and you can't express it. That's silent pride. That's the more venomous. You know, there's pride, there's, there's a pride that's poisonous, and there's a pride that's venomous. You know, venom is venomous, it's more potent than poison, poisonous. The silent pride is more deadly than the loud one. Next one. Silent pride is when your fellow minister is teaching and says a word that is new to you, 
but you couldn't write it down because you feel like they would think you don't know. Ah. Oh, it's, it's true. Somebody else comes to teach and you think you know more than them so you don't have to take notes. Oh, they're not on my level. They're not getting the revelations I'm getting. That's pride. There's a treasure in every person. And whether you have passed that stage, you still honor and take notes. Because Jesus is watching. Silent pride is when men honor you and you reply, all glory be to God. But deep down your heart, you stole the glory. Silent pride. Ooh, dangerous, right? Oh, this, I like this one. You ready? A lot of prophets fail this area. Silent pride is when you attend a meeting or a conference and you are not introduced or honored, then your face changes. <laughs> your face changes and you feel, you feel rejected and dishonored. That's seeking approval and honor of men. That's silent pride. Silent pride is when you want to be seen, you want to be heard. And because they didn't call your name, you feel dishonored, you feel rejected. You went there to be honored by men, not to be seen by God. Silent pride. Today we'll make decrees of humility. To turn, yes, Lord, he said today, Break fellowship with pride and come into communion. Yes, Lord. He said, let humility be your friend and let meekness be your bride. <sighs> yes, Lord. Come on, somebody write that down. Humility is my intimate friend. Meekness is my wife. That's the heart. One should marry humility. Watch this. He said, humility will start kicking out pride in your life when you marry him. Ooh, yes, Lord. Let humility become my, come on, somebody write it in the chat. Let that be your decree. I decree that humility is my intimate friend and meekness is my intimate wife. He said, when you, when you come into fellowship with humility and meekness, do you know humility and meekness is a weapon? It's that's attacking pride. It's just kicking pride out of your life without you working. Meekness and humility works for you. Say with me, humility and meekness are my twin brothers and sisters. Yes, my twin friends. They work for me. Next one, you ready? Silent pride is when you share a testimony and begin with, by the grace of God, but actually you didn't mean it. Oh, it happens in church a lot. Praise the Lord. Everybody says hallelujah. Then they start with I. That's right. I, me, I, me. That's silent pride. I, me, I. Taking the glory, taking the credit. Silent pride. You have to watch for it. Or you can be trusted with the next glory. Because Jesus go from glory to glory. And for you to go to the next glory, I'm telling you the truth. In 15 years walking with him, every year, he always inspects my pride. Okay, this year you've passed them, you've passed humility. Dress and keep it. Mm -hmm. Let me share this if you don't mind. Yes, I, I love being naked and honest. One of the daughters had a visitation while we, while we were in service. She saw Jesus and she saw Angel Michael. But she said, behind you was an eight feet tall man, excuse my language, with two organs. She said she saw, excuse my language, excuse my language, she saw two penises standing behind me. And written on the forehead of the eight feet tall man was pride. She said, it was behind you. And then she said, in the visitation, this is not in a dream or during service. She said, during service, she saw it came from behind. She said, Jesus came and 
took out the giant that was behind you, Paul Brad, and he put upon you a cloth of humility. That's when he started dealing with me about pride being the hardest enemy to see when you walk in glory. So pride is not only a snake, it's a man with, excuse my language, two organs, two penises. You know pride is behind homosexuality and lesbianism, changing people's identity and gender. It's pride. Thank you, Jesus, that you took out that giant that was behind me. Thank you, Father, for daughters and sons who can see to help you. If you think you can't hear from nobody, that's pride too. You need others who can see what you don't see. And be humble and take it because they see what you don't see. It, okay, everybody imagine this. Imagine after eight, seven years, you're walking in glory, manifestations, and power. And then somebody come and tell you, Dad, I saw pride behind me. Oh, I ain't got no pride. That's pride right there to respond that way. No. Humble yourself and say, yes, my daughter. Pride always comes. How do I overcome? She said, Jesus took out the giant behind you and put upon you cloth of humility and said, dress and keep humility. So every day I'm praying, yes, Lord, dress and keep me in humility. Come on, everybody, dress and keep me in humility. Dress and keep me in humility. If you don't dress in humility, pride will strip you naked. And let me tell you the first sign of pride, embarrassment and shame. Pride will come in. That's what happened to Adam and Eve. They saw each other's nakedness. That was pride. The snake that came in the garden was pride. You got to watch that snake, pride coming in the garden. Say, say with me, yes, Lord, remove all snakes from my garden. Lord, any snakes in my garden this season, remove the snakes. Whether it's a person or a thing, remove. Because your watch this, it's called the garden of intimacy and the garden of purity. You know the garden is your heart. So if there's any snakes there, Lord, any snakes in my heart, come on, be thou removed. Mm -hmm. You need your garden clean and pure. Jesus loves snakes, but he don't like the fallen one. You ready for this one? Silent pride, watch this, is when you have a conference that was attended by five people and you feel bad as if God has not done anything, but one attended by 50 and more persons you post on social media so that people will see that you are powerful and can pull crowd, calm down. Ministry is bigger than that. So whether one or two come on Zoom, I don't, mm, the Father and Jesus and Holy Spirit is watching. Whether one person come or billions come on the line, Jesus will leave one, sorry, will leave 99 and go for one. So if there's only one on Zoom, I'm still coming with Jesus. But I'm telling you the truth. Most of these leaders, they go where the crowd is. Oh, how, how many people are coming? Does that matter? What if God only want to bring two people to the conference? Oh, I'm not coming. See? Oh, yes, my friend. 15 years in ministry, I've seen the dark side of ministry. They won't come because of money. They won't come because of crowd. But you are, you are, all you have is a gift. No anointing, no presence. You only have a gift to motivate people. Why, why should I invite you? And you want five-star hotel? Uh huh. You want five star hotel and you want Lem uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, Lamborghini for your entourage and you want to go to a fire? My friend, you are asking for $50,000 and you can't even see. That's what's going on in ministry pimps and prostitutes. Silent pride. They think they're celebrities and stars. I'll ride a bicycle to a program because it's about the Father and Jesus, not about how you dress. No humility. Can I, can I say another one? Do you know how many years I have fought Jesus about putting prophet by my name? I said, Lord, please. He said, no. 
Say, Jesus, your name is Jesus. My name is Kofi. Call me Kofi. Uh huh. But, huh? If you don't call some people bishop, you are in trouble. Silent pride. Their identity is in their title. That if you don't call them by title, they feel disrespected. That's silent. Jesus said, I will exalt your name, not your title. They need purifying. They need soul decrees. Some of you need soul and heart decrees. This is it. Purifying of your soul. Cleansing of your hearts. Humility means the only thing left is your name. Father, I'll give you a name above all. Name. I'll make your name great. Not anything else. So all you need is a name and fruits. So just because somebody has profit by their name, that don't mean Jesus is pleased with them. That don't mean he's in a, that don't mean he's in, a, in an approving relationship with them. That don't mean he approve of them. Can I go deep? Pastor Benny Hinn said this, my spiritual father. He's in my lineage. Catherine Coleman, Catherine Coleman. Sorry, yeah, Catherine Coleman. Benny Hinn, TB Joshua, that's my lineage. You know what, you know what Pastor Benny Hinn said one day? He was teaching on the anointing. He said, Saul and David, please don't miss this. This will help you. I said, wow, that's how you know your lineage. When they teach, it preserves you from falling. He says, Saul was anointed with a veil. And David was anointed with a horn. Watch this. And he said, just because the anointing is on you, don't mean God is with you. God was with David, not Saul. But Saul was anointed for the people, not for God. So just because you are anointed, that don't mean God is with you. Wow. He said, just be, Pastor Benny, he said, just because you are anointed, that don't mean you are a king. David was the one God chose, so he anointed him with oil and a horn. But Saul was anointed to be fired. I said, hmm, anointed to be fired? That's true, because he was rejected, though he was anointed. So just because people are anointed and gifted, that don't mean they are approved, though, by God. Do they have a heart of David or heart of Saul? People pleasers are already fired. They are anointed, but fired. That's a scary place to be. And I tell you the truth, they're not having dreams. They're, not, they're no more having dreams and prophets are not talking to them. That's Saul. Don't ever get in that place. Anointed to please people. Not please God. Mm. Saul's are people pleasers. They have pride, jealousy, and envy about the next man of God or the next king rising. It's mostly those on the scene right now that will fight the new move coming. The new move that's coming, those on the scene right now that God has is no more with them, they will be the ones the enemy will use to fight the new. Just like Saul and David. Saul's have silent pride, secret jealousy and envy. The next king, David, which is the next move he wants to kill. Silent pride. Don't be like Saul. Be like David after God's heart, not after pleasing people. See, that means David's soul was pure and clean. You ready? Silent pride is when you are no longer open to the rebuke of Holy Spirit. Ready? Silent pride is when you post the many of your programs on Facebook so you can show other ministers that you are also busy for the Lord. Ah, this teaching is from one of my spiritual fathers.
silent pride is when you take a revelation as though you brought it forth. It is called revelation because it was revealed. Everybody, do you see silent pride? Instead of you honoring the person who had the revelation, you say you brought it forth. Mm. Silent proud. Next one, you ready? Oh, this one is dangerous too. May we all have silent humility. Silent meekness on the inside. Silent pride is when you become proud with your encounters and words you hear from God. If God speaks to you, please be humble in sharing it to his people. So you can have pride in your encounters and hearing from God. Share it with his people, that's me. Uh-oh, you ready for this one? Silent pride is when other ministers of God is praying and you can't close your eyes or say amen because you feel you are more holy and spirit-filled. This is mostly above apostles and prophets. Ancient wisdom of the Father. 2012, preserve and kept me. It, it will preserve and keep you. You gotta watch your heart. Always walk in humility and meekness. This is another dangerous one. Silent pride is when you are humbly proud. Bow your heart, not your head. Can you imagine? How can you be humbly proud? It's those people who say, oh, I am humble. No. You don't say I'm humble. Let another person praise you. Bible says, let another man praise you. Don't praise yourself. Don't only seek praises of men. Don't praise yourself. Let seek the honor and praise from God. Silent pride is deadly. Watch this. This is what he said. Silent pride is when you are Reading this and say, I don't have it and still struggling with it. So silent pride rejects the truth and accountability. Silent pride will not make you recognize I have it. Lord, change me. Mm. If you must get to the highest realm in God and in ministry, you must completely destroy pride. Are we ready for heart decrees and soul decrees tonight? Yes, Lord. The antidote is humility. How many of us are ready for heart decrees and soul decrees tonight? Remember, glory is what changes you and changes things. If things are not changing, take note. Glory, love, blood, fire. If there are certain areas, okay, so watch this. You know we have the five senses. We also have the five areas where you love God. And remember the enemy, when he goes to court in heaven and he's accusing you, he accuses you in the area where you don't have love. Look, I'm telling you the truth. What Jesus said today, he said, my, my blood speaks greater things in court than what Satan is accusing you of. However, you have to show up to court to hear the cases in order to fight. If in the natural, if you don't show up to court, what will happen? You, you pay a fine. You pay a penalty. How many of you don't want to pay a penalty in this season? Show up to court. That's why going to Jesus seven days, seven times in a day is, is important. So he can tell you, like today, what he said. My blood 
speaks greater things than what Satan is saying in court. And then he said, he, whenever he's accusing you, he's accusing you in your soul because your heart belongs to me. How many of you know our soul is not perfect? Our heart is. Do you know your heart is perfect? Your heart is perfect, but your soul is not. When you were born again, your spirit was perfect, but your soul, our soul is a mess. Your heart is perfect, it's your soul. That is the one that your, our soul is what needs the most work, not our heart. Because when you are born again, the Holy Spirit is in your heart. So now your spirit, which is your heart, is one with the Holy Spirit. But your soul is the middleman between your heart and body. And which one in court is the enemy accusing you of day and night? Your soul, mind, will, emotions. So guess what he does? He tempts your will. Everybody, you see the, you see the secret? He tempts your will to do things against the will of God. And then he goes to court and accuse your will against God. And if you don't show up to court, you can be handed over to Satan. You're like, wait a minute. Yes, my friends, you can be handed over to Satan because he's, he has won the court case because you didn't show up. You say, how? Ah, don't miss his revelation. Judas did not show up to court. Peter did. When Jesus said that, I was like, oh, Father, Jesus, huh? Huh? Jesus, huh? but you were on earth. What courts are you talking about? He said, the courts is my heart. They, he said, Peter loved me the most. So that gave him a Passover, even though he denied me. But why didn't Judas get a Passover? He didn't show up to my courts. He showed up to the courts of the enemy and sold me for $18 meaning 18 shekels. How, you, how are you in court selling your judge? He sold Jesus to his enemies. In court, you know what that is? Betrayal. And the sentence for betrayal is death. So Judas did not get a pass. That's why he was only given bread, not wine. See, watch this. The bread and the wine is also court. We're going to start doing it soon on the Zoom. We're going to be doing communion. He said, that's part of the courts. Because in this season, the enemy want to sift us like wheat. You know why he's in the sifting? Because when his season is up, remember when Jesus finished his 40 days with Satan? What happened? Manifestations. Now I understand the, the difference between Jericho and Jordan. Everybody right now, do you know where we are right now? Let me give you a secret if you don't mind. There are four seasons in a year. There are four watches, four seasons, four living creatures, right? Okay, so the four watches is first watch, second watch, third watch, fourth watch. There are four seasons, uh, spring, summer, winter, fall. There are four living creatures, eagle, Ox, man, lion. Satan also has four seasons, but he only has one watch. Third watch. He works the most at third watch from 12 to 3. But he also has seasons where he operates. His favorite season is fall. He wants you to fall. He wants your fruits to fall. That's why he's in the sifting business right now because fall is coming. So don't miss what I'm about to tell you. If you don't stand this summer, when fall season come, guess what? You start falling in areas you're not supposed to fall because you didn't show up to court. I love the way Jesus teach. He dress and keep you in the seasons. He said, summertime is harvest time. Mm -hmm. And Satan comes in the harvest time, while I'm giving out harvests, promises, rewards, and blessings, remember what we said on Sunday, some are still intestine, 
Some are still in harvest. Some have failed the test. I'm going to read a letter to you to what the father said today. But he said, summer and fall. He said, let me teach you how Satan works. During the summer, he's sifting many like wheat. How? Looking for weaknesses to exploit. Watch this. And sowing seed. So that when fall season come, the seeds he sowed in the summer spring up. Sorry, in the fall, come up. You're like, ah, why do I have unforgiveness? So, I mean, it's April, sorry, it's August and September. Why am I still struggling? I'm going to teach you. Summertime, Satan sowed some seeds. So while it's supposed to be harvest time, he's also in seed time. You say, how? Look at, watch this. Jesus said to me, when Judas and Peter denied and betrayed him, it was summertime. I said, wow, because he said I was about to harvest the world on the cross. So I went through summer season and that's why they all fall away. Whew. That's why, that's why Easter is wrong. That's not when Jesus died. It's not Easter. You know when Jesus died? Don't miss this. He wasn't born. I don't want to get into those holidays, but we need to do the holy days. See? Everybody, you see it? Peter, you will deny me three times. That was summertime, he told him. Because the enemy came to sift him like wheat. When does wheat come? Summertime. So when Jesus told him, you deny me three times, that was summertime. And same summertime, don't miss this, is when Satan entered Judah's heart. What happened next? Fall season came, they all fell away, except one. Right now, what season are we in? We are in July. We're in the seventh month. It's completion. I can't just tell you Jesus' part if I don't tell you also Satan, what he's doing. This is what you need the most. You don't need someone telling you, oh, Jesus is doing this. And he do the person is not an owl at night or an eek or a lion at night to see what Satan is planning. So you can avoid his tricks and traps and schemes because he's into the sifting business right now. And the sifting he's doing is in the area of our weakness. Peter's weakness was his tongue. Don't miss this. Jesus said to me, Peter's weakness was his mouth. Simon, Simon. See, he didn't call him Peter. He spoke to the old man, Simon, Simon. He didn't call him Peter when he was talking about Satan. Simon, Simon. Satan has desire to sift you like wheat. He didn't call him Peter, his new name. That means when Satan want to sift you, he go after the old you. Kofi, Kofi. Mm -hmm. Satan has desire to sift you like wheat. Everybody, that is a harvest term. That means when it's harvest time, Jesus is into gathering wheat. But Satan wants to steal some of the wheat. He already got the chaff, but he wants some of the wheat. And what does he do? Look, don't miss this. Loving Jesus the most is not enough. Uh-oh. Because Peter loved Jesus the most. But why did he still deny? You don't deny someone you love. He had a weakness. Well, he didn't have the Holy Spirit. That's why when the Holy Spirit came, watch this, on the day of Pentecost, it went to their tongues. Uh-oh. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. You know why we're speaking tongues? Because the tongue is our number one enemy. So because Peter had a cussing problem, watch this, his cussing problem changed when the Holy Spirit came on his tongue on Pentecost. So what changed Peter? It was the Holy Spirit and fire on his mouth. Jesus said, Judas, hmm, it's different from Peter. Everybody, this is the season we are in. It's not enough to hear, yes, we're in the seventh month. Come to him seven times a day. 
Mm -hmm. Write down seven things. You've been hearing it, right? We need to make soul and heart decrees, promises, inheritance, all those are everything is being done at the same time, but you have to hear the other side. Satan. What he is saying and what he is doing, so you can avert his plots and his plans and his schemes. And you know how he works? In the summertime, he go after your weakness. That's why if you don't have love in your weakness, come on, love covering your weakness, come on. This is the season where you see people try to expose other people. They're working for Satan. This is the season we're supposed to be loving and covering one another. So at 1130, we're going to make heart decrees, soul decrees. And he said, when you are done with the heart and the soul, now loose the five in their hearts, minds, souls, bodies, and strength. Everybody, don't miss this. See? Promises, inheritance, rewards, blessings, promises, covenant. See those five? If you don't have the love and the blood of Jesus in those five areas, it can't manifest. You know why? Because Satan, remember what we said in the beginning. If you only understand court system and why people are, have felony charges, they have things on their record. That's why they can't get certain things then you will understand the courts of heaven, why people don't get certain things. It's not because God don't love you. You have a, you have a charge on your, how let's say, you have a record. Love hold no record of wrong, see? Your record will be cleared by love if you have love in the area where you are charged. Somebody, can I say it again? Love holds no record of wrong okay so why do people have records of wrong in court love in the area where you are wrong you don't have love in the area where you are wrong so for example if my tongue is wrong i need love on my tongue that is why and i love being naked and transparent with all of you as i was repenting in june the cherubim, the, the one with six wings and eyes, came with coals of fire and olive leaf. They put it on my tongue. Just like Isaiah, cleansing, so that the enemy cannot find anything in you in common in court. You need the coals of fire or the olive leaf. That's what happened to Isaiah. Uncleanliness cleaned. Let me say it again. Please don't miss this. Understand that Satan is a legalist. He goes to court with the laws of God to come against us lawfully with evidence and record. Just like in the natural, the reason why some people are in prison is because they have what? First degree murder or they have charges on their record. Well, it's the same thing in the courts of heaven. We have charges in court that the enemy is accusing us of and we need to show up to court mm -hmm, because we have a lawyer we have a judge and i'm telling you his blood and his glory and his love and his fire will speak on your behalf if you show up to court seven times a day or i tell you the truth the season will pass by and you still have pending cases stop it look don't miss this his promise is yes, amen, but you have no's in court. His promise is yes, amen, but why are you getting the no? Show up to court. Just like the seven churches of the book of Revelations, the first church he could not give the blessing to because they left their first love. That's the charge they had against them in court. You left your first love, so I can't give you this. That's what I'm saying in this season. What have you left? Look, it's one thing for Satan to have something against you in court. It's a different thing when Jesus himself has something against you in court. 
we need teachings like this. Because all we hear is, oh, God is good. God is gracious. He loved me. No, not here. I will teach you the full counsel, like David said. No, like Paul said, the full counsel of God. The fullness of who Jesus is. You can't pick and choose what sides of him you love and reject the other. No, that's not love. If you're going to love him, you got to love all of him. The righteous judge, the man of war, the bridegroom, the king of kings. All of who he is, you must love and accept. This is one area that's going to be very hard for the church. When the bridegroom himself is inspecting the church, he has a few things against the church. What are you going to say? Oh, he died for my sins. Here you go, you're still drinking milk. Inspection of the church is not milk, it's meat. And if he doesn't inspect you, you cannot carry glory. The first church, remember I said, out of the seven churches, only five failed. Only two made it. And even Philadelphia made it. But Sardis hardly made it. Which one of the seven churches are you in this season? He's already inspected Holy Way again. And it's the Church of Philadelphia because we're after his heart, the key of David. We are after his heart. We're not after fame, popularity, name, no. After the Father's heart, after Jesus' face, that's what it's all about. Any other thing you are after, he will have something against you. And you don't want Jesus. Uh, look. It's enough to, for Satan to have things against us because every day he's looking for something wrong in us to go and accuse us of. Thank God for grace and mercy and love. But I'm telling you, it's a whole different thing when Jesus says, you have left your first love. Look, I'm going to be open and honest. I like being transparent to all of you. That season, I was expecting a heavy harvest. Four months straight seeking his face. And I failed. You left your first love. And look, some seasons, he's not going to give you a pass because he's maturing you. He said, you have to wait another four months. He's not going to give you a buy all the time. Sometimes he'll give you a buy. He'll give you a pass. At times, he has to be firm with you so you don't become spoiled, become obedient. Watch this. Out of the five rewards, rewards came, mm -hmm. covenants came, promises. No, no. Inheritance came, blessing came. I didn't get the promises. This is where this teaching come from. I'm letting you know so that you can avoid certain pitfalls. I didn't love him with my body, so I missed the promises. I said, Jesus, I've never heard anybody teach this. Loving you with our body, we get the promises. Everybody, miss, don't, miss one, don't miss one brother tell you. I've never heard this before. He said, your body comes from the land. Where did I create your body from? The dirt, the land. Did I not say promised land? Whoa. So if you don't love me with your body, you can enter the promised land because the land is your body. The promises is in the land. The promises is in your body. I failed. I thought the promise was in your heart. He said, no, covenant is in the heart. Promise is the body. That's why I made a covenant with Moses before they entered the promised land. So please, Learn from my failures. I passed four and failed one. Nobody taught me to love God with your body. How do you do it? I mean, I was fasting. Right? I thought that was the way. He said, no. Dancing with your body is loving me like David did. David danced until he was naked. He said, that's loving me with your body. I didn't know. He said, that's what I've come to tell you. So let's break it down for each and every one of you. Yes, you need faith and patience to obtain the promises, but we're going deeper. 
because faith works by love. Watch this. If faith works by love, then he says, love me with your heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. Let's break it down. Covenant, promises, rewards, inheritance, blessings. Okay. Which one of the five areas are you not loving him? That's the area where you're not going to get the result. He made the covenant heart. I passed the test of heart. I passed the, the test of soul. You say, how, how do you do it? Okay. You pass the heart test by love. You pass the soul test by humility. Because David said, I've humbled my soul with fasting. Mm -hmm. You pass, love the Lord, you love a heart, mind, soul, mind. You don't want to be high-minded, you need meekness. Strength, the joy of the Lord is mine. You need joy in your strength, joy. To love the Lord, the God with your strength, you need joy. Joy is in his presence. So the heart of joy. But I didn't love him with my body. I thought loving him with my body was abstaining from women. He said, that's discipline, not love. He said, you are from the tribe of Judah, one, and you're from the lineage of David. And the lineage of kings love me with their body. I've never heard that before. How do you love Jesus with your body? Consecration, yeah. Abstaining from certain things, yeah. He said, that's discipline. That's not love. I said, then what is love then? He said, I have three bodies. I have resurrection body, crucified body, glorified body. I loved my father with my body by putting my body on the cross for you. He said, suffering is also loving with your body. That you've done. But this you have not yet done. Dancing. Yeah, I, it, I'll tell you the truth. I don't dance. I do a lot of worship and praise with my mouth, but not with my body. So please, I hope this is helping you when Jesus says, love me with your body. It's not only um, abstaining from certain things or certain foods. Yeah, that area too. Last year, he got on me with food for the body. Look. You want this intimacy? You got to have boundaries when it comes to your body. You can't eat certain foods because your body don't belong to you. It belongs to him. It says a husband's body don't belong to him, but his wife. And a wife's body don't belong to him, but her husband. If Jesus is your husband, he's going to talk to you about your body and what he don't want on your body. But you see, so fasting is not loving him with your body. Fasting is for your soul. Yes, suffering is with your body. You pay the price with your body, yes. But he said, you're not loving me according to your lineage. I've never heard that before. How do you love Jesus according to your body? And then he said, David, look what David did. He danced he loved me with his body till he was naked. I thought he was just dancing because of the victory he got. He said, no, that's love. So everybody, what's loving Jesus with your body? Dancing. Your body. You dance with your body. Your body begin to give him an aroma of love when you dance before him. Look, kings love when you dance before them. I'm, I'm, I'm being naked before all of you, so this will help you. I didn't pass the test with my body. And this is the second year he's been talking to me about my body. He's, he first started with food last year, this year, dancing. I'm telling you, if you want this marriage with Jesus, he's going to talk to you in all five areas. Okay, you love me with your heart. It's pure and clean. You love me with your soul. It's meek. You have not given me your strength. He will tell you which area you're not loving him because he's trying to make you spotless and clean before the Father. So he will address areas you don't want to address. I've never heard anyone teach on loving God with your body and how to do it. I thought fasting was the way. I thought abstaining, staying away from certain things with your body 
He said, those are true, but it's not the truth. It's not the way I want you to love me. See, he has a way of what he wants, of how he wants to be loved. How do you touch him? It's with your body. Touch is one of his love, is one of his love language. So I hope you're hearing this on the line. Loving him, yes. Suffering with your body. What is that? Wounds, scars, bruises, stripes. Your body. That's 50%. But I didn't know about the other 50. The other 50 was dancing and suffering. How do you dance while you are suffering? I failed that area. See, see, this is what it means to be honest, transparent. Tell others where you fail to help them. If you're hiding yours, he don't trust you. I will tell you so you can go beyond. You can do greater. Remember this. Love Jesus with all five. Over 15 years. By grace, heart, mind, soul, sold out. But there's one area that has always been a thorn in my flesh, my body. Paul had it. Jesus had it. All men will have it. How do you love God when you have thorn in your flesh and it's painful? Paul said, Lord, take away this thorn. Which one is yours? Which area is your weakness? I'm going to give you another secret. Don't miss this. For years, I said, Lord, take away this thorn. You know what he said? I will not take away the thorn. If I do, you will not be humble. You will think you are perfect because you have no issues. I'm leaving this thorn in your flesh to keep you humble. So please understand when your heart falls and when your body falls. Temptations come to your body. That's why it says, just said my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. This, this was June. He talked about the body again. It's hard. Come on, can we be honest? Food. It's hard. Food. Your body needs food, don't it? Uh -huh. But he's patient. He's long-suffering. You may say food is not important. Hmm. Jesus ate only fruits and vegetables, though. That was his diet from the father. He was the last Adam. So what do you think he ate? If he's the last Adam and the first Adam was supposed to only eat the fruits and the, in the, that's what he ate. His favorite is fruits and vegetables. Because he's also a Daniel. He said, Adam. So when he, so he, he even showed me when he went to the wedding. It was fruits and vegetables that he ate. He said, I only ate fish and bread to teach them something. Fish is for evangelism. Everybody, you get it? You know what Jesus ate? Fish and bread. Any, everything he did was a revelation. When he turned water into wine, that's a revelation. Him eating fish and bread is also everything about Jesus is, a, is for a purpose. He said, my favorite is fruits and vegetables and herbs. He said, he's the first Adam. What God told Adam to eat, he ate. Which area in this July do you want God to complete? Because it's number seven. I hope I'm being a helpmate to each and every one of you tonight. Let's break it down again so that you understand. Heart is covenant. Rewards is the soul. Blessings is the mind. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. The mind is made of what? Mind, will, emotion, the soul. Strength is joy. So your body promise. I've never heard it before. Huh? Wow. Yes, our bodies are made from the dirt. Dirt is in the land. Ah, oh. so promise land. So promises are with your body. 
so I can miss my promises if I don't love you with my body? I started crying. Forgive me for not knowing. So I'm, so I'm telling you, if you don't, lack of knowledge is the key. But thank God for correction. Now, put on music, start dancing with the body. Not just for the promise, but because you love him. So remember, yes, Lord, I will tell them. He said, that's why on the cross, my body was whipped for the promise. That's when the promise of the Holy Spirit came because his body was whipped. Everybody, you see it? Promised land. The promises came because of Jesus' body. So take care of your body on the line. It's connected to your promises. I'm telling you the truth. You say, how? Every promise is on earth, right? Your house is in the dirt. Your body is the dirt. So everything on this earth come from a body. Temple. Take care of your body. Food. If you're a woman, temptations will come. Abstain. It's not easy. Your hormones will be, come on, we're going to be real on here. My hormones be everywhere. And then Jesus will say this. Can I help you? He always has an answer and a solution. He said, ask for my body and my blood in times of weakness and temptation. Can I say it again? He says, self-control is not enough. You need my body. You are my bride. Everybody, you see, when you are his bride, you have access to his body. His body can take temptation and not fall. Come on. So he said, so I will run to him, Lord, my, my body, you know, the urges, come on. He said, ask for my body and my blood. My blood will speak to your hormones. My, your, my blood will speak to your urges. Because we are human. We have urges. Especially we men, we suffer. If any man don't tell he's not suffering in that area, excuse my language, he gay. Call somebody. He said, ask for my body and my blood and do communion. Anytime I do communion, I don't feel no urges no more. I say, wow. Temptation will come. He said, ask for every, every time temptation comes to your body, ask for my body. You see, my body will protect you. My blood will speak for you. Everyone online, this goes for you, your body. That's why when you feel a woman, I have, I have to tell you the truth. Don't let no man touch your body. Because that's Jesus' body. You don't know where them hands been. Mm -hmm. You don't know where that man's hands has been and it's touching you. Mm. See, I'm sorry. When you marry Jesus, it's different. Unless you want to live a normal life, which I'm not going to compromise with you, but if you want to live a normal life, you have free will. But when you marry Jesus, you have boundaries as a wife. You can't be touched by men or idols. Mm -hmm. Because he bought you with a price. He ain't selling you. See, that's key. Because your body carry glory. That's why he told Mary Magdalene, don't touch me. Ah, uh, why you think he told her, don't touch me? Because his body didn't belong to him, he belonged to the father. Everybody, you see it? Certain levels, especially after your resurrection, your body can be touched. After your process, your body can be touched. That means Mary Magdalene and Jesus used to touch, hug, kiss, friends. But after his resurrection, don't touch me. I haven't, I haven't gone to the Father yet. See, Father need my body. That's why Jesus came back for his body. So let's break it down again, all of you on the line, so you understand again. Rewards, blessings, inheritance, covenants, promises. I learned a new thing from Jesus. Heart is covenant. See? But I didn't know body was promise. He said, yes, you suffered with your body for me, with me, but 
one area you love. You don't love me with your body in the area of dancing. Oh, now I go in the shower naked like David, but you dance. But before, no. Don't do it because you want the promise. Please. No, 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 no. That's the wrong motive. He's going to give you the promise when you give you, when you give your body to him. Do it because you love him. See? Strength. See? Inheritance. You need strength. Covenant, heart, body, promise, reward, mind. See, each area God tells us to love him, there is a reward there, or you get something in return. When he broke down promised land, I said, wow. So we're going to touch and agree right now. Let's do heart decrease tonight, soul decrease, body decrease. So please, wherever you are, place your right hand. If you're driving, please don't do it. Place your right hand on your heart. We're going to start with the heart decrease and then soul. When we do our soul, touch your head. Because there's power in your hands. We're going to make decrease tonight. And we are expecting as the cleansing by his blood is going through us. The promises will flow after. See? These signs and wonders shall follow those who believe. The signs will follow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we ask for the grace. Yes, Lord. We're pretty, see, he has already started. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Take more of me. Give me more of you. Let's decree that right now. I decree. Take more of me. Give me more of you. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord, we will. Mm -hmm. Take more of me. Mm -hmm. Give me more of you. More of your humility. More of your meekness, more of your faithfulness, more of your loyalty, more of intimacy, more of relationship. Come on, let's say that one. Take more of me. Give me more of you. Yes, Lord, we will do it. Take self. Give me selflessness. Take my pride. Give me your humility. Take my rebellion. Give me your obedience. Take my stubbornness. Give me your trustworthiness. Come on, let's say right now. The law gives and the law takes. There's an exchange taking place right now. The giving and taking anointing is taking place. He say with me, take more of us. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for correction. Take more of us. Give us more of you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for correction. Take more of us. Give us more of you. Mm -hmm. Yes, Holy Spirit. More of your face. More of your heart. More of your hand. More of your feet. We thank you for it. We honor you for it. And we trust you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Touch your heart. We decree that the glory and the love, and the blood, and the fire of Jesus and Holy Spirit is going back in time and space, is going in time, before time, after time, to every place where I did not love with my heart, Jesus. Come on, right now, begin to. Begin to commit your heart to him. Is there any area in your heart that you have not given him access to? Remember, there's four chambers of your heart. Is there areas of your heart you have not yet given him? If, if you love him with all your heart, don't be concerned. But if you don't love him with all, maybe 95%, give him the, the last five. He deserves it all. You're worthy of it all. All, not some. You're worthy of it all. Mm -hmm. 
all. Give him all. We decree our heart all to you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He says, after you decree the heart, now release the covenants that go after the heart. Lord, we release your covenants. Establish upon better promises. We release the covenants that go with the hearts to be established in Jesus' name. Amen. So decrees. Let's go. Can you touch your eyes? Touch your eyes. Because the eye is the window to the soul. Touch your eyes. Let's decree. I open up my eye gates to the king of glory. I open up my eye gates to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, baptize my eyes, which is my soul, in your love, in your glory, in your blood, and in your fire seven times. We decree that the blood of Jesus and the fire of Holy Spirit is baptizing my soul seven times in your love, seven times in your fire, seven times in your light, yes, Lord, seven times in your face, yes, Lord, seven times in your glory. Say with me, I am excellent in soul. I am excellent in soul. I am excellent in soul. Touch your ears, please. Ear gates. Yes, Lord. I open up. He let him that have an ear hear. So now ear. We open up our ear gates to the Lord Jesus Christ to only hear his voice and a stranger's voice we will not follow. We decree that our ears are being cleansed by the blood and fire of Jesus to only hear him and him only. Any open doors in my ears be shut and only open to the voice of Jesus and Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Let him that have an ear hear what the Spirit is saying. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Next one. Tongue gate. This is the most important one. Our tongues. Listen to what God told Moses. I will do this thing which you have spoken. The Lord is saying, as you speak, he will do what you speak. That means I need your mouth to be clean, to only speak what I put in your mouth. Let me give you a secret in this season. The Lord says, whatever you say is what he will do. This is what he said to Moses. I'm speaking from our lineage. Moses, I will do this thing you have spoken. How many of us want God to do things we speak? Then your mouth has to be clean. So let's, let's get into the tongue gates. We need our mouths clean because the word of God is pure. So. You can't speak his word if your mouth is not pure and clean. So let's go. I open up my tongue gate to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Mm, I felt that. My God. Holy Spirit. Yes. Cleanse our tongue gates from careless words. Any words we have spoken knowingly. And unknowingly, forgive us of our trespasses with our tongue. Cleanse our tongues in your fire to speak the words of God. We thank you that the blood and the fire is washing our hearts, connected to our tongues in Jesus' name. So me. I'm excellent in tongues. I'm excellent in tongue. Mm -hmm. 
I am excellent in tongue. When you look at the meaning of dunamis, power of the Holy Spirit, it means excellent in soul in the Hebrew and Greek. So when we say I am excellent in tongue, it means he's making your tongue of excellence to speak for him. Write it down. I will do what you speak. Wow. So you be careful what you speak when you're praying to him because he's going to do it. Whatever you speak when you're talking to Jesus, he's going to do it. That's why your tongues must be full of grace and salt. Like Proverbs says. Yes, Lord. Finally, body gates. Let's do body gates because our body is connected to the promises, the land. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. That's the heart, willing and obedient. But your body is for the land. So say with me, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, Lord, we will do that. Mm -hmm. He said, frankincense and myrrh was put on my body. Wow. He said, frankincense and myrrh was put on my body. Can we all do the same? If you have access to frankincense and myrrh, can we put frankincense and myrrh? Not today. Can you get frankincense and myrrh and put it on your body as a sign that Jesus is going to prepare your body for promises? Our bodies go with the promise. Yes, Lord, we will be obedient. He said, frankincense and myrrh was brought at my birth and frankincense and myrrh was put on my body by Mary Magdalene. You see, we need frankincense and myrrh on our bodies to be preserved. Thank you, Jesus. We will do it. If you have frankincense and myrrh, or if you have access to frankincense and myrrh, not tonight, start doing it tomorrow if you can. And say, Lord, this is your body. I bathe it. Mm, yes, Lord. He said, Esther, put these perfumes on. Ah, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Esther did myrrh for, and frankincense for six months. I'm not saying you got to do it for six months, but get the revelation. Frankincense and myrrh is how her body was prepared to be queen. Wow. Not just her heart, her body. So we also need to put frankincense and myrrh on our bodies so Jesus can clean it and purify it for his glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's touch and agree right now. Each and every one of you, let's touch and agree because it's going to manifest. Once you are clean and pure by decree, then it's time to now loose. Say with me, we lose the rewards, the promises, the inheritances, the covenants, and the blessings in this season, in our lives, on earth, as it is in heaven. We decree our mornings. We command our mornings. We decree that July shall be days of abundance, of miracles, of promises, of intimacies, of all kinds, in Jesus' name. We decree it shall be a month of open doors because doors have been shut and new ones have been opened, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on, can we can we can we write in the chat? I thank you, I love you, and I trust you, Jesus. Oh, let's all decree our thanksgiving. I thank you, I love you, I trust you. Remember, I trust you is your breakthrough decree. So let's type it in there. I thank you. I love you. I trust you for it. Mm -hmm. I thank you for it. I love you for it. I trust you for it. Make the decree. I thank you for it. I love you for it. I trust you for it. That means we're trusting him as our faithful and true judge. The enemy will not win any cases, no matter what, because we trust him. I thank you for it. I honor you for it. And I trust you for it in this season. In Jesus' name. 
Amen, 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 amen. So please remember this. He said, I will do what you have spoken. What are you going to tell him? Whatever comes out of your mouth, that's why you got, before you go to Jesus, meditate on it because he said the moment it comes out of your mouth, he will do it. He said, where is that in the Bible? Read Exodus 33 and 34. He told Moses, I will do this thing you have spoken because you have found favor and grace in my sight. I will do things that you speak. That's why you got to speak for him to do certain things. Mm. What are you going to be speaking this season that you want him to do? It? He's going to do it. We already decree and declare it that the kingdom is going to be done and he will do it. In Jesus' name, amen. It is 12. It is 12 midnight. It's a time for everything. It's a time to receive from him. It's a time to rest in him. And so we shall rest tonight. Tomorrow we'll be on again. He said, do the decrees all July. So that's what we're going to be doing. Decreeing, declaring, soul and heart. Look, I wish above all things that your soul will prosper. Do you know as we make the soul decrees, your soul will start prospering. Oh, yes, you're about to get soul prosperity because of soul decrees. Prosperity is in the soul. And you, your soul will be in good health at this rate. In Jesus' name, amen. So, love you all. God bless you all. Tomorrow's Wednesday. I hope all of us will start praying for me. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You want a revelation of why Jesus said, you do for me because Jesus went through his last days was a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And nobody prayed for him. See, if you are willing, if you love me and you love Jesus, kindly choose these three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Let me tell you why. Because the glory that's coming on the earth, women are important as to what is coming on earth. A woman's tears is important. The women were crying for Jesus and there's an earthquake. <laughs> so I'm tell you women, your tears are powerful. So please, while you come in your intimate time with Jesus and the Father, bring my name. To Jesus and the Father. He said, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You are praying for him. And I, and as I pray for you, mm -hmm. the cup, the cup is becoming heavier to drink because many are dropping their cups and crosses in the desert. And he's saying, Will you pick up the crosses and cups of others? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I say, yes, Lord, I'll do it. Because he doesn't want nobody left behind. So please, if I found favor and grace in your sights on the line, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, remember me, like the, the thief said on the cross, remember me in your kingdom, right? Remember me when you come to Jesus. Remember me when you come before the Father. I am like the thief on the cross letting you know, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me when you come into for the Jesus and the Father. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, in Jesus' name. I love you all. God bless you all. Tomorrow will be on 9 p.m. Shalom. Good night.